The president of Slovenia, Borut Pahor, came to Poland to pay a farewell visit before the end of his mandate. Mutual cooperation with President Andrzej Duda was based, among others, on stopping Russian aggression against Ukraine. I wanted to thank Mr. President for the support a few weeks ago. We entered the joint initiative at the time so that Ukraine would be granted the status of a candidate for the European Union. This is a very important initiative, which we started then, and is on the table today very seriously considered in the European Union. And what I would like to emphasize, it is extremely important to Ukraine. I would like to express my admiration for Poland in solidarity with Ukraine. Polish women and men showed their best face to the world in this very difficult time. They are an example and an inspiration for our common European approach to Ukraine. For a long time, we were deaf to the comments we received from Poland that Russia has ambitions to expand to the West. I thought it was an exaggeration. Then there was aggression. Since then, my friends' political analysis and forecasts have been extremely important to me. On the 100th anniversary of establishing diplomatic relations between Poland and Portugal, Portugal's Prime Minister António Costa met with Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. The talks concerned aid for Ukraine and the challenges resulting from the increase in population due to refugees. By helping Ukraine, we are realizing our common dream of a united continent, from Lisbon to Kiev. Today we talked about special solutions for Ukraine, a special status for Ukraine, an accelerated path to join the European Union. But if some European Union countries rapidly protest, we want to work out together with Portugal an appropriate package that will be attractive for Ukraine, one that will show that Kyiv's place, Ukraine's place, is in the European Union. We must find a solution that will allow us to meet the current priorities, military, financial and humanitarian aid, but also help in the reconstruction of Ukraine and the integration of our neighbor into the European community. It seems to me that 27 member states are ready to find a suitable statute for Ukraine. On Wednesday, the governments of Finland and Sweden applied to join NATO. The president of Turkey, Tayyip Erdogan, remains unchanged against her candidacy. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg assured that the differences in the alliance's constituency are natural. Then we are 30 allies from both sides of the Atlantic with different history, geography, political parties in government, and sometimes there are some differences, but we have a long uh, track record in NATO of uh, being able to overcome differences and agree, and I'm absolutely certain that we also will be able to agree on this issue uh, when we are uh, after sitting down and, uh, and discussing this issue together as NATO allies. The accession of Finland and Sweden to NATO was supported by, among others, the leaders of the Netherlands and Germany. I trust that we will finally be able to find a common position, and I hope Finland and Sweden will become NATO members. If we were to define the general will of the alliance, it would be that Finland and Sweden should quickly become members. Therefore, I am convinced that the current efforts to work out a common position will be successful. We are doing everything we can to actively work towards finding the necessary common ground. The process of Finland's accession to NATO may take at least a year. The government in Helsinki has taken steps to protect the country from possible hybrid attacks by the Kremlin. The number of officers on the approximately 1,300-kilometer Finnish-Russian border was increased.